In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a glossy web 2.0 stylish looking button. Let's go ahead and get started with this button. Let's go ahead and zoom in so we can get the approximate size here. I'm going to go ahead and bump a couple layers in there by pressing this new layer button down here. Let's grab rounded rectangle tool. Uh, let's set it to 24 pixels. That's the corner radius. You want to have it set on path. And let's try that again. Okay, once you get your approximate size, go ahead over the path palette over here. And let's go ahead and pick a nice blue before we do that. Let's go ahead with this blue right here. Right click on this work path, fill path with the foreground color. Press OK. And go ahead and delete the path. Go ahead and pop up to layer 2 here just by clicking on it once. You know what, for the top I'm actually going to do something different than I normally do. Let's grab the pen tool and let's give it a little bit of a shape here. Like so. And we can just close it off like that. Your path only needs to be good inside of here. Inside the button. And then let's go ahead and give this a lighter blue right click it doesn't need to be perfect because we can always change it later which I'll show you how to do fill path and since we did it on the background color let's go ahead and pick background color and press OK and delete that path let's hold control click on layer one control shift I will get the inverse selected come up to layer two here and press delete and there you have that button. So let's hide this. Let's go in here to the form button and hide it because we don't really need it anymore. We just needed it for size. Okay, so before we go any further, let's give, let's go ahead and um, name this layer. Let's go ahead and bottom color on this one, top color, now let's go ahead and double click the bottom color, and we're going to give this, um, let's go ahead and do a typical drop shadow, why not, <laughs> so let's drop the distance down to zero, and the size, let's go with about 9, looks okay for now, you know, let's change it later. And we're going to do something really nifty here, let's go ahead and drag it to the new layer icon, bring it all the way above here, and let's get rid of this drop shadow by double clicking, because we're also going to add an inner glow, and you'll say, what the heck happened to, the, why did you do that, you'll see in just a second. Um, if you notice, our top color is no longer here. But let's go ahead and get this inner glow going. Um, I'm just going to leave it to this color. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and change it. Why not do it right here? Let's go ahead and pick this blue here. And screen is fine. And let's go ahead and change the opacity down to... Let's go with 33 for now. And the best thing about this now is we'll come up to fill, and that'll just get rid of your shape color here, but it will leave the effect. So if you never knew the difference between fill and opacity, now you know. So fill, if you change the opacity, it will get rid of everything, including the effect. If you just take the fill down, it will keep the effect and get rid of the inner shape color. Anyway, let's move on. 
Now, let's see here. Let's go ahead and um, make a <clears throat> shadow gradient. Let's hold control and click on this bottom color. Make sure you're on layer three. Let's go to the gradient tool and pick rounded gradient. Let's go in here and pick this foreground, a transparent. D for default and hold it about in the middle of the button and I'm holding shift it's something I like to do and before you do that just press reverse and there you have it there's a nice shadow let's go ahead and put it to overlay and drop it down a bit let's drop it to around 47 looks alright can deselect that and let's see next oh, let's before we move on let's go ahead and name the layers let's name this gradient shadow there we go okay let's go ahead and take the top color here click on the top color and let's grab the blur tool and make sure we're set to let's go with about 29 30 percent and just start blurring it here on this edge I like to do this just because it makes it more into one button instead of two harsh separate looking pieces and then after you're done with that let's go ahead and get a new layer let's drag it all the way to the top there and grab the marquee tool let's go ahead and grab the ellipse one drag out an ellipse let's say like that control backspace fill it with white and then let's go ahead and take the layer one make sure you're selected layer one come up to filter blur Gaussian blur let's go ahead and bring it up to about 5.1 that'll work for now and let's go ahead and drop the opacity down a bit after we have dropped the opacity on this layer, let's go ahead and name it. I like to name it Gloss. It's my typical name for that. And we are almost done. Let's take this text here, change the color to a nice darker blue. Let's go about there. And then let's go ahead and double click the outer glow and also make that a nice light blue color screen is fine uh, leave the opacity alone for now because we're gonna, just going to drop the size a bit and then drop the opacity just to give it a nice like little glow and I'm going to drop this actually change it to Tahoma I'm not liking the text too much but we're not focused on the text, we're focused more on the the actual button. Let's get rid of the bold. So if that's pretty much it. If you want to change these colors, it's really simple, which I kinda of wanna do. Let's go to color overlay. You notice it takes that ugly red. Let's go ahead with a darker blue. have it stand out a little bit more than it was okay and okay back out and there you have it a little shiny you can always raise the gloss up a little bit a little shiny button for you for your submit forms or whatever you need you can make them in all sorts of shapes sizes color and so on and so forth.